Hello, my sweets. <laughs> it's so sweet of you to join me today. I'm Menopause Taylor, teaching you all the sweet, sour, and indifferent things about menopause. And if you haven't already guessed, I'm talking about sweet things today. <laughs> We're working our way through the unit on heart attack. It encompasses chapter 28 in my book, in the first edition, as well as in the second edition. So whichever one you have, it's chapter 28. But today, we're gonna to address something foreign to both you and my book. Last week, I taught you about the details of the fats. Everyone naturally associates fat with heart attacks, and that's entirely logical. But that's not all there is to it. So today, I'm gonna to provide you with the missing link, which is sugar. Right now, you're probably thinking I'm confusing heart attacks with diabetes. I'm not. We're talking about heart attack, and I'm going to explain the role that sugar plays in causing a heart attack. You know that I always tell you the truth, and that the truth always makes sense. And so today is no different. Here's why this video is so important. As with so many other things in the world of menopause, you have been misled about sugar. If you don't learn the truth, that oversight could be the very reason you have a heart attack. So let's just start at the beginning. Let's start with a bit of history. Heart attacks have not always been the number one killer of both men and women. It wasn't until the early 20th century that the incidence of heart attacks began to rise. Naturally, when a disease rises in incidence, people start looking for its cause. So the quest to find the cause of heart attacks began. And about that time, there was an ongoing quest to determine the cause of cavities in our teeth also and sugar was found to be the culprit in causing cavities. So great strides were made in reducing cavities. Fluoride was added to water and people were taught that sugar rots your teeth. It's a funny thing, once people discover the cause of a disease, it's like they file it away and fail to consider it as the culprit in causing some other disease. It's as if they assume that each causative agent can only be attached to one disease. But as you'll see over and over in my tutorials, usually one agent causes many diseases. But it wasn't until the 1970s that the fat became culprit in causing heart attacks. A man by the name of Ansel Keys published studies showing that the best fed people, in other words, the meat eaters, had the most heart attacks. And because animal products are the primary source of fat, fat became the bad guy when it comes to causing heart attacks. If you're of menopausal age, you're old enough to recall the 1970s. That was when suddenly there was a low fat movement. Everyone started focusing on fat, and only on fat. That's when margarine was promoted instead of butter. It's when solid Crisco, Crisco shortening started being replaced by liquid vegetable oils. It's when you started seeing low-fat milk and skim milk. So in the 1970s and continuing to the present day, the food industry modified its products to meet the demand for lower fat in our diets and it took the fat out of foods. But when you take the fat out of food, the food tastes like cardboard. So to compensate for the fact that low fat food tasted like cardboard, the food industry began adding sugar. And of course, sugar tastes good. So you started seeing products like this one, Snack wells. Before the low fat movement, these had three grams of fat per serving. Then Nabisco removed two grams of fat for, per serving. But in the place of those two grams of fat, they added four grams of sugar. So now there are seven grams of sugar per serving. Oh, and one serving 
is one cookie. I think we would all eat this whole package instead of just this one cookie. In fact, we might eat two or three packages. <laughs> but have you noticed that the obesity pandemic has occurred since the low fat movement began? Look around you. Regardless of where you live, you see more obese people now than ever before. The percentage of obese humans has doubled in the last 28 years. And the increased risk for heart attack is rising faster than the increase in obesity. For the first time in history, even people who live in poverty are obese. And 30% more people who are obese are actually undernourished. The low-fat movement was supposed to decrease the incidence of heart attacks. It didn't. Not only that, it increased the rate of heart attacks, the incidence of obesity, and the incidence of diabetes. So why hasn't anyone noticed that we're focusing on the wrong thing? You see, I pay attention to patterns like this. I look at common practices, observe how they are serving or disserving their purpose, and figure out the problem with the logic that created the situation in the first place. Well, it turns out that at the same time Ansel Keys published studies targeting fat as the culprit in causing heart attacks, another man published studies targeting sugar as the culprit in causing heart attacks. But by that time, people already associated sugar with cavities. And they couldn't seem to grasp that sugar might be at fault for causing heart attacks too. Like I said, we humans are strange that way. Once we have a notion in our heads, we find it difficult to shake it. This other guy's name was John Utkin. He published studies showing that sugar consumption was associated with heart attacks. But for some odd reason, the government latched onto fat as the culprit. And in the 1970s, the government recommended limitation of total fat intake to 30% and saturated fat intake to 10%. And nothing has changed since then. The research on sugar was pushed to the wayside while people got fatter and fatter and fatter and had increased rates of heart attacks that coincided with the increase in obesity. So I'm here to inform you that sugar causes heart attacks. Bah humbug, you say? Well, just think about it. Sugar makes you fat. When you're fat, you develop type 2 diabetes. And when you develop type 2 diabetes, it puts you at very high risk of a heart attack. They're all connected. Dietary fat is no longer the biggest problem. It's sugar. And sugar causes heart attacks in a second way too. It's metabolized and stored as fat. And not only that, sugar is addictive. Once your taste buds are trained to crave sugar, and once you get a high from eating sugar, your body thinks it needs sugar. It's just like a drug addict who craves and needs drug. The drug takes over. It governs everything else. That's what has happened to the sugar that is added to food. If you start reading ingredients on food packages, you'll be shocked at how many things have added sugar. I was buying ground flax seeds one day, and I habitually read every label and every list of ingredients, no matter what. <laughs> and the flax seeds had sugar in them. Of course, you probably won't recognize most of the added sugars, and that's because there are hidden sugars in different forms. There are actually 56 different types of sugar. I made a chart of them for you. I've organized them according to whether or not they can contain fructose. Why did I organize it that way? Because fructose is the sugar that causes heart attacks. 
In this list, only 16 of the 56 sugars do not contain fructose. That's terrible. And this list does not contain any of the non-caloric sweeteners like sucralose, saccharin, saccharin, or aspartame. But if you look at a nutrition label, the one thing it does not list is added sugar. That's the most important piece of information of all, but it's not there. So you have no way of knowing how much of the sugar content is added. And if you're wondering why added sugar is more important than natural sugar, it's because naturally occurring sugar does not cause heart attacks. In fact, naturally occurring sugar comes from only four sources. There's sugar cane, there's fruit, there's vegetables, and there's honey. And if you think about the quantity of sugar in these natural foods, or if you think about the task of finding them in nature, they're all hard to get. It's definitely not easy to get sugar out of sugar cane. And you have to grow fruit and vegetables in order to get the sugar they contain. And you have to fight bees to get natural sugar, not natural honey. But the food industry has made sugar very easy to get. In fact, it's made it impossible for you to avoid sugar. Nowadays, fructose is in everything. High fructose corn syrup is the first ingredient in the majority of foods. But fructose is the type of sugar that is the culprit in causing heart attacks and obesity and diabetes. All calorie containing sweeteners contain fructose and every single disease that occurs as a result of sugar consumption is due to fructose. These include obesity, heart attack, and diabetes. But fructose is never found alone in nature. All natural forms of sugar contain fructose paired with glucose. Added sugars don't. So when the food industry lumps all sugars together, they are hiding critical information from you. The bottom line is this. Fat is not the only cause of heart attacks. Sugar is just as fatal. But with everyone focusing on low fat, the food industry is adding sugar. And the kind of sugar they're adding is fructose. And fructose is responsible for causing heart attacks as much as fat is. So you have to avoid fat and sugar if you want to prevent a heart attack. Okay, I know I've shocked you. <laughs> if you don't believe me, just look around. Notice how many obese people there are. Notice how common heart attacks are. Notice how much sugar you see in foods, even foods that have no reason whatsoever to contain any sugar. And notice how ever since the low-fat movement started, people have had more weight gain, more diabetes, and more heart attacks. You might discover that you yourself have some of the problems caused by sugar, but I don't want a heart attack to be one of them. If you want more information on this, you can read a book entitled Fat Chance by Robert H. Lustig, MD. It explains all of this in great depth. I'll warn you, it's not an easy read. If you don't have a background in biochemistry or physiology, you might find it a little difficult, but as usual, I have tried to simplify the information in this tutorial. So that is it for today. If you need individual help with any of this or anything else, please go to menopausetaylor.me and schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I will help you with anything. Be sure you subscribe to my channel. Be sure you watch the videos in order, starting with the very first one. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And come back next week when I'll discuss the symptoms of heart attack in women. You cannot afford to miss that one. I'll see you then. Bye.